I'm in, I just want to say welcome and uh, thank you for coming to worship here today at Newstead Baptist Church. It's good to see you. It's, uh, it's getting kind of exciting. Uh, we're getting that much closer to Christmas. I can't believe that it is five days away before we get to celebrate uh, God coming to earth as Jesus Christ so that we can be restored in our relationship with him. So, uh, so this is a, it's a good day. It's a, it's a good time of the year for us as Christians to celebrate the Lord's work. There are a few announcements that I want to point out and make sure that everybody is aware of, and I'm sure most of you know. Uh, but unfortunately, tonight's Christmas concert has been... Uh, I used the wrong word, I think, when I talked with some of you. We're postponing it. Our desire, our goal, is to have our Christmas concert later on in the month of January. So the plan is to still uh, have it probably in a few weeks, probably mid-January. Because the kids are working really hard, and uh, they're really excited to do that. So the goal is to figure out with everybody a day mid-January that works so that we can have the kids minister to us and we can re-celebrate uh, Christ's birth that way. So that's the plan on that. So please keep January uh, in your mind on that and be praying for that. Uh, the other announcement that I want to do is about our Christmas Eve service. We still plan on having our service here at the church, 7 o'clock. Um, the only catch to that is I don't know what uh, Doug Ford's announcement is going to be on tomorrow. So we do have to wait and see what's with that. But the, the goal, the plan, is to have the service here at the church at uh, 7 o'clock. So uh, we, will, uh, we will plan accordingly that way. And uh, I think we have a sign-up sheet still at the back. So if you, if you don't mind signing, uh, if you haven't already indicating that you're planning on coming, uh, then that way what I'll, what I'll do is if things change or if there's any question as if we can have it or not, I'll start to call people and let everyone know. Or you can feel free to call me and send me a message too. So, but that's, that's the plan that way. And then uh, Larry has an announcement that he wants me to make. Uh, we have, he has the new envelopes for the upcoming year. He's got them already, so please see Larry if he hasn't already given you your box of envelopes. Uh, and if, uh, if you don't have envelopes and you would like to have envelopes this year, uh, Larry's the guy sitting in the back in a chair. If you, uh, if you see him, he'll, uh, he'll pass you a box and get, get you set up that way. Uh, so those were the announcements that I had uh, on that angle. So if there are no other announcements, sorry, Wendy. Oh yes, okay, yeah. Uh, as uh, as I sent out the email, gifts for our neighbor. Uh, if you brought gifts and uh, you're not sure what to do with them, there is a table in front of the coat rack that you can place the gifts there, and then uh, I will take the gifts to uh, to the drop off area, or I will coordinate with the family on getting the gifts uh, to our neighbor so that she can enjoy that little um, part of Christmas that we're holding the outro. So uh, please, and if you forgot, if you're like, oh no, I left it at home, or oh, I meant to do it, don't worry. I can uh, thank with you tomorrow, uh, and uh, that gives you enough time, and uh, add that to the to the other guests. And, uh, that's when I'm going to drop them off. It's sometime tomorrow afternoon. So, all right. I believe that is the final announcement. So, uh, I would just invite you to turn with me in your Bibles. Our call to worship this morning is John chapter one, and it's going to be verses one to eighteen. And uh, the more I read this, this section of scripture, the more I am truly amazed and blown away by what it means. The fact that Jesus Christ came to earth and lived among us. Of all of the things that follow people's minds about Christianity, the fact that how could there be a virgin birth? Or how could uh, a flood come and all the animals stay on an ark? And you know, all the different things that people 
question. Truly the most unbelievable thing is that Jesus Christ, who is fully God, came to earth fully man. Fully man, fully God, and he lived among us. That is the most amazing thing that my mind has been contemplating this year, is the fact that Christ came as a man. So let's let's be encouraged by his word, and then let's worship him. So John chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness does not understand it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, To those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent or human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only who came from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. John testified concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was the one of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Christ Jesus. No one has ever seen God, But God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him. We can know God, we can be restored to God in a relationship because of Jesus Christ. Because of what Christ came and did. So let's worship. Let's celebrate our Lord and Savior as we gather here. So let's bow our hands. Heavenly Father, oh Lord, what a, what a mind-boggling concept for us to even try to grasp the fact that you humbled yourself. You became fully human. You came to earth to live among us, to reveal yourself to us, to show us and to provide a way salvation, to have our relationship restored to you. So Father God, we thank you. We thank you and we praise you. And Lord, we just ask that as we have gathered here today, that you would guide us in our time of worship, that you would reveal yourself to us, and that we may be able to experience your glory. So Lord, we ask this in your precious name. I would just uh, invite you to uh, join us in a time of worship when he's going to come up. And uh, we have a treat because Suzanne is home and she's going to be uh, playing the piano for us. So let's uh, let's worship together. Good morning and welcome. And we also want to welcome those who will be joining us in the Zoom chat room as well. So
and Benjamin to come up and uh, light us or lead us in the lighting of our Advent uh, candles. So. This is the fourth time we celebrate Advent. Do you remember why we are taking time together around the Advent tree?
I need to look at the screen set. Because it's the children's story time set, that's why. And uh, Logan, can you, you can see it already back there and under? Yeah. yeah. So look at this picture. Have you has anybody ever seen this picture before? Yes. You have? Oh well you maybe saw it last night on my computer. <laughs> but it's a rather interesting picture. There's a whole lot of things going on. If you look carefully at it, you're going to see um, a lion. You see a lion there, you can see a tiger, uh, you can also see a cow and a leopard. And uh, yeah, so I don't know if everyone can see, but yeah, the lion, the tiger, a cow, the leopard, a lamb, and a wolf. Does this look right? Have you ever seen a wolf and a lamb lying down together? So close? And have you actually ever seen a little child who is brave enough to pet a lion and a tiger at the same time? No, it's kind of a it's kind of a scary thought as we would think of it. But this is a picture, and a man by the name of Edward Hicks, he painted this picture. And he painted this picture because of a scripture verse. And the scripture is found in the book of Isaiah. And it says, Listen to my words and look at the picture while I say it. The wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with a baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion. And a little child will lead them. This is a picture that he painted based on that scripture verse, and that's why he's got the wolf and the lamb and the lion and the tiger and wild bee animals and gentle soft ones all together, all being led by a little child. Now, who do you think that little child is? Anybody? Hunter, who do you think that little child is? Or Logan? Jesus. Jesus. You're right, it is Jesus. That's what this picture is about. It's about the peace that Jesus brings. And I don't know if you guys even saw over here in the corner, but over there, you have all sorts of different people that are usually enemies of each other, and they're not fighting, but they're getting together in peace and harmony. And that's what Christmas is about, and that's what we're celebrating with our Advent candle this week, is the peace that Jesus brings. We can have peace in our hearts, and we can have peace with each other if we're looking to Christ. So I'm going to pray, and then normally I would say you can go downstairs, but I have something extra I want you to Watch first, and then after our next hymn, you can go downstairs. So let's, uh, let's bow our heads, and then we'll continue. So Heavenly Father, Lord, as the Eccles family, we're leading us in our Advent time, our time of remembering about the peace that you bring. Lord, we thank you for that peace. Lord, we thank you that it's available to all of us. And we pray for your peace that it would be upon our kids and that they would go through. So Lord, we ask this in your name. Amen. All right, so we have another short little thing up on the video screen. my pot this morning and he was all coiled in under there. He could be anywhere now. I'd lift your feet if I were you. <laughs> this kind goes straight for your heel. He bites. I hate snakes. 
It all goes back to the garden. That serpent ruined everything for us. God said he will keep on hurting us. He'll bruise our heel. But there's hope. A baby will come from my line who will crush that serpent's head once and for all. He will put everything back to right and save us from the mess we made. We are waiting. Do you know how many times I was promised a son? A son who would one day become a great nation. God kept reassuring me of this promise, even though I was old and the waiting was long. He proved himself trustworthy. And then, finally, one day, my miracle son Isaac, he arrived. I know what it's like to wait. I have my promise. But God promised a baby. A baby from my line that would one day bless all the nations of the world. He is coming. We are waiting. To us, a child is born to us a baby is given we are waiting so uh, <laughs> so I don't know I'm, I'm assuming everybody recognized that that was Mary and Abraham and Isaiah giving us the message about a child to be born and that they so let's, uh, let's sing one more hymn together, and we're going to sing, Come Thou Long Expected Savior. So let's sing together, Come Thou Long Expected Savior. Syria. 
and everyone went to his home town to register. So Joseph also went out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea in Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on, and on earth peace to man on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen them, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Here ends the reading of God's Word. So there is a, a story that uh, Walter Helwig introduced me to uh, a number of years ago. And uh, it's a story that I had never heard, and it was one that I have thought about often, and uh, I like it. It's a, it's a nice or a, a good Christmas story and uh, Walter found out about this story I believe he read it in the Daily Bread and uh, some of you will know this story some of you may be familiar with it but it's one that I want to share with you as we consider uh, the peace of Christmas and uh, it's a story that happened during the First World, World War and as you know, the world, First World War began in August of 1914, and uh, it was brutal. It was bloody, it was horrible, and it was four years that affected the lives of millions and millions of people. And uh, it's a type of war, uh, it's different today, but, uh, and you guys probably know this better than I do, how war was fought, uh, the way they did it, was basically they dug trenches, the men went into the trenches, and it ended up being a war of attrition, where the last man standing was the one who basically would win the war. And the story that Walter told me was a story that happened on Christmas Day in 1914. And uh, there was a soldier who popped his head up over the top of the trench that he was in, and looking across the battleground, looking across no man's land, he just saw bleak and sorrow. And rather than throw a few hand grenades across the field of death, instead he tossed a couple of tins of corned beef into the enemy's trench, <laughs> knowing that both sides of the war lacked life's basic essentials. Everyone was always hungry. 
So he threw two cans of cold beef into the enemy's trench. Within a minute or so, a dull thud landed beside him in the ground. What was it? Was it a hand grenade? Was it a bomb? No, it was the arrival of a little package filled with coffee and candy. And if that was me, coffee would be huge. <laughs> I second that. Cautiously, the men began to emerge from the relative safety of their mud coffins. Within a short while, jokes were being translated from German into English and vice versa. Food was pulled together for a Christmas dinner. Cards appeared, I guess they were Baptist. <laughs> Cards appeared and games were played. And finally, a game of soccer broke out between the two warring armies. And shouts of delight and good humored rivalry. The day ended with handshakes, smiles, and even prayers for each other. On December 26th, the commanders on both sides outlawed any repeat of such an event under pain of death and the slaughter <coughs> that, uh, that would mean. The ray of hope disappeared, and most of the participants of that Christmas day would be dead within a year. It's an amazing story. Uh, it's an amazing uh, glimpse of peace, kindness, and goodwill in a terrible, horrible situation that many of us can't even begin to imagine. But why did this happen? Why on Christmas Day? Does this story tell us all that we really need to know? Is Christmas really about the hope of mankind triumphing, the goodness of man's heart, how we as mankind can overcome darkness, the human spirit rises again? Is that what Christmas is about? Today where does Christmas fit in, the true meaning of Christmas? Where does it fit in amongst all of the presents, all of the wars, all of the Christmas trees, the terrorism, the depression? Where does it fit in with COVID? What about with movies that we watch? What is the true Christmas spirit? We're going to ponder that a little bit today and ponder what it means about Christmas peace. If you were to ask the typical person out on the street what Christmas means, they would probably sum it up with a story like I just read about how we're supposed to have goodwill and peace towards others. They would talk about how we're supposed to be kind to each other, how we're supposed to be caring, how we're supposed to give gifts. They might talk about how it's about uh, being with family members and uh, looking out for each other, doing good. But that's not what the Bible talks about. If you watch, and I've done more of this this year than I normally do, I think I've watched three Christmas movies so far, uh, which is about a quarter of what my family has watched. But uh, in all the Christmas movies, they talk about the good that we should do at Christmas time. That the good that we as humans should be doing towards each other. That's not what the Bible talks about. What the Bible talks about is entirely different. It tells the story of Jesus Christ coming to the world. Christmas is the celebration of Christ's birthday. That when Jesus was born, as we read earlier, the angels announced to the shepherds, 
Peace on earth. Goodwill towards mankind. The angels were announcing that peace on earth was available and goodwill towards mankind. Well, what is peace? I think we should consider that a little bit. Good peace and goodwill. Basically, in order to have peace and goodwill, you need to be friendly, don't you? You need to be friends. If you're truly living in peace, you need to have a relationship with people and be friendly with people. Teresa and I, I think the rules are we have peace, don't we? Because we have a good relationship. Because we are friends. You need to be friends if we're going to have peace with each other. It's a relationship. It's about us having a good relationship together. But with friends, sometimes, maybe oftentimes, there is a falling out. There is a break in that relationship. And when there is a break, when there is a severance in that relationship, it can almost lead to wars with each other or battles with each other. And that's basically what World War I was about. One side was the aggressor, the other side needed to convince them by means of force that they had done something wrong and that they needed to stop. The aggressor, of course, believed that they had the right to pursue what was in their best interest. So the result ended up being two people or two groups of people on either side in their trenches digging in. We do that with friends, we do that with families all the time. There's a misunderstanding. Somebody puts their needs, their desires, their wants above somebody else's. Feelings get hurt, relationships are severed, and there is fighting. There is war. Until one side finally surrenders and then peace is restored. When we look back over history, we know with 2020 vision that the peace that was restored after World War I only lasted about 20 years before the whole thing started up again. Why? Well, because the relationship hadn't been restored completely to what it once had been. The only thing that had happened was that one group of people had subdued the other side of people. The root of the problem was still there. The relationship wasn't truly fixed. That's what happens in our relationships regularly. I sometimes will say, oh, I'm sorry just to prevent conflict. But that the root, I haven't really forgiven. It hasn't really been fixed. And the problem just keeps bubbling. And then it produces another flare-up. That's not what true peace is. The Bible tells us that we need true peace in our broken relationships. And that's what Christ has come to, them, come to do. He has come to bring true peace between us and God. Between mankind
listen, that they wouldn't trust, that they wouldn't believe God. And they disobeyed him. They decided that they were going to do it on their own. Their strong desire for what that fruit was and that they wanted to have it for themselves was stronger than their desire to be in relationship with God. And they broke their relationship with God. Their relationship died. It wasn't an immediate, immediate physical death, we know that, but the relationship with God himself was destroyed. How was that to be fixed? You know, if it was me, you know, what I do with my kids, Seth's up here, I can do this. If Seth does something wrong, what do I do with Seth? I sit Seth down, and I say to Seth, Seth, you did this wrong. Now you need to go and make it right with that person. Seth, you need to go and say sorry. You need to go and fix the problem. That's man's way of doing things. We think we need to fix the problem. But the Bible tells us that's not how the problem gets fixed. The only way that this problem, this relationship between us and God can be fixed is by God doing it. Who do we think we are that we, lowly human beings, can fix our relationship with God? It's God who has to fix the relationship. And that's what Christmas is all about. It goes all the way back into Genesis. I talked about how Adam and Eve, they sinned, how Adam and Eve, they, they broke the relationship with God, and because that relationship was severed, it severed all humanity's relationship with God. But this didn't catch God by surprise. God had a plan. And it wasn't one that he was packed working together as it was unfolding. It was a plan that he had right from the very beginning. And in Genesis 3.15, we see this plan start to unfold. God is talking to Adam and Eve, and he's talking to the serpent. And he's telling them the consequences of their actions. And then God says in verse 15, he says to the snake and to Satan, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. That verse is an amazing verse. It is often called the very first gospel, because it's the Bible's first prediction of a Savior. It's God telling Adam and Eve, it's God telling the servant that there is going to be a deliverer. There is going to be somebody who is going to come and fix this. He is going to crush you, Satan. You might strike his foot, but he is going to crush you with his heel. And in turn, he is going to restore the relationship that fallen man has to God. That's God's plan. That it was going to be God who fixed the problem and not Mankind. The whole Old Testament tells us, points that way. We see this theme repeated over and over again that God was going to send someone, send a redeemer. 
who is going to fix the relationship, who is going to bless mankind. We see it in God's promise to Abraham. We see it in God's promises to Isaac. And in Jacob, we see it to Jacob, to Judah, to Jesse, even to King David. We see over and over and over God promising a coming Messiah, a coming Redeemer who would bring and restore peace between man and God. And that's what is so amazing. That's what is so great about Christmas. It's because the angels declared it, the angels spoke it to the shepherds that this is the time. That Redeemer, this promised peace bringer, has finally come. <laughs> to restore the broken relationship between man and God. That peace is available for us. Now let me tell you, this week was a real challenge for me. I knew I would be speaking about peace and uh, I had been contemplating and pondering, you know, thinking about how we're going to talk about peace and peace that God brings. And uh, I think God, in some ways, wanted me to put it to the test. Because on Friday, when I uh, got the kids all sent off to school, and Wendy was off to school, I had just uh, sat down with my Bible and my computer and my notes, and I was just about ready to start writing and putting all my thoughts together and writing the sermon on peace, when all of a sudden, Wendy called. And Wendy said, Dennis, you're going to get a phone call from Annette. She's tested positive. <sighs> As Wendy's talking to me on the phone, Annette starts calling and I hear what's happened. I find out that she has hope. I find out that Jonathan has been home since Wednesday with COVID. And I'm just thinking, oh Lord, my stomach, there was no peace. <laughs> my first thing went through all of the people that I had visited, all of the people that might be exposed what would happen to our church? What would, how big was this going to get? Had we followed, had we as a church followed all of the protocols that we were supposed to follow? My mind was racing and I was trying to think of all of the things that I needed to do that I have to do to try and fix everything that's going on. And as I, my mind is racing and racing and racing, I had a note on a piece of paper, and it says, real peace can only come from God himself. I needed to stop, and I needed to look to God and cry out to him for his help, for his mercy, and for his and I had hope because I had these words right in front of me that that is only found through Christ. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter how hard I work. I am not the one in control of everything. It is God who is in control. And that God brings peace. And that's what Christmas is about. It's not about our humanity and us trying to do peace. Because our peace never truly lasts. The peace we try and bring is only like 
a small way I do. But we can truly experience peace with God because of Jesus Christ coming to the earth. <laughs>
Merry Christmas, and may you truly experience the peace and goodwill that God has sent to Christ Jesus. Let us go in peace, worshiping Christ. Merry Christmas.